you're a little... <coughs> you're a little tribe. Okay, remain calm. I've done this before. Stop, drop, and roll. Oh, no, no, wait, no, wait. I know this. Okay, remember your medical training. If a patient chokes on food, do the tummy squeezy move. Yeah, that, that, that's it. Well, who do you think I should choose? Well, if it were me in this situation, I'd just go along for the ride and see what happens. That's it? That's your advice? Well, it's, it's just what I... You know, I'm trying to take some agency in my life, and you're over here telling me to just see what happens. That's not helpful. Threesome? <gasps> Excuse me? Uh, not with me. With me? I mixed up Mayor West's bag with Bruce and Jeffrey's. Leather chaps. Saddle. Bull whip. Rope. Sheriff's badges. Saddle bags. Saddle soap. Fancy boots. Yep, yep, this, this is, is that one. Daddy and Meredith had an affair. That's why she left me. Oh, this is horrible. Now, I have to call my husband. Peter Schmidt Hotel, don't tell Lois. Peter? I'll transfer you. The spot, Peter Schmidt Hotel, don't tell Mom. Chris? I'll transfer you. Peter Schmidt Hotel Laundry. Meg? Mom? Yeah, I'll transfer you. <coughs> <coughs> <gasps> oh, you, you saved my life. Oh, how can I ever repay you? Money? May I have your attention, please? I believe you dropped this. The blueberries are still intact. Shame to let something so sweet go to waste. Before we begin our service, I'd like to remind everyone that I became a priest after my divorce. So yes, I have had intercourse. To start things off... Daniel LaRusso's gonna fight? Oh, I misheard that completely. I've just been told that a special friend of our Meredith has made a long trip just to be here today. I'd like to ask Lois Griffin to say a few words. Okay, last load. Chris, will you help me fold these sheets? Sure, sounds easy. They're fitted. Ah, there's our belle of the ball, and she's chosen a suitor. Well, you two look happy. How'd you decide? Money. But I do feel bad for leaving Principal Shepherd all alone. Oh, you leave that to me. I may have one more clever scheme hidden up my sleeve. Like we've got a love triangle on our hands. I'll treasure this forever. Well... Don't wait too long. It'll liquefy from the enzymes in your saliva. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I gotta find a bathroom, because that's mostly what life is after 60. Hi, I'm Lois Griffin. I, uh, I just wanted to be here today to say goodbye to Meredith, and thank you. Uh, thank you for raising me and, and, and for being there when no one else was. That's why I was so hurt when you left, and I always held it against you, but now I realize it, it wasn't your fault. You know she can't hear you, right? But no matter what happened, Meredith, thank you for being my teacher. Huh? Oh, excuse me. Oh, no, it's my fault, really. I have a brain thing where I go blind every 45 seconds. Hi, I'm Jacqueline. I'm Meredith's sister. Really? Oh, it's so nice to meet you. I'm Lois. I, I am so sorry for your loss. It, Meredith was my nanny a long time ago. Oh, is that right? Oh, that well, that's so nice of you to make the trip. You see, Meredith, dark. Darkness. Evening. I'm looking forward to the doctor being in. Oh! <laughs> Hello there. Maybe I could see you between periods? Oh! Looks like you've got your hands full. You're telling me? I just don't know what to do.
Even today, you're teaching me that the people you love most of all can still betray you. Daddy, you had an affair with Meredith? How could you? Lois, honey, you don't understand. The horn part in Sue Studio gave your mother a headache that lasted five years. What was I supposed to do? Yeah, I don't want to hear it. Do you have any idea what that woman meant to me? While you were off working or golfing or God knows what, she was at my piano recitals or, or teaching me how to tie my shoes. She was the only person in that house who was really there for me, and you took her away. Darkness. Just ride it out. And we're back! Meredith loved her time as a nanny. It's a shame she had to give it up after the affair. Affair? I know. We try not to talk about it. Some rich guy in Rhode Island. <sighs> they were seeing each other, but then his wife found out and forced him to fire her. <gasps> so that's what happened. Hey, it's Pewterschmidt. You still have that all-night construction crew? I need a favor. Hey, you owe me. I picked you up from LAX. You have to do anything I ever ask for the rest of time. Evening. I'm looking forward to the doctor being in. Ooh. <laughs> Hello there. Maybe I could see you between periods? Oh. <laughs> Looks like you've got your hands full. You're telling me? I just don't know what to do. Well, who do you think I should choose? Well, if it were me in this situation, I'd just go along for the ride and see what happens. Tragic, isn't it? She had nowhere to go, so she came back here to our childhood home of three states away. I don't believe it. I don't believe the Earth is round, so that's me. Oh, excuse me. The funeral director is here. I'm trying to avoid paying him. Oh, my. <laughs> this may be one of my ocular migraines talking, but I see fireworks. Can I ask, is that licorice on your breath? Or is that just my licorice breath bouncing out of your mouth? Why don't you get in here and find out? Mm. <laughs> Hi, I'm a 15-year-old wild card. And... Well, let's get your gun already. Oh, Peter, I'm so glad you're finally doing something positive for your health. Hey, what do you think about this treadmill? Yeah, this one's good. Let me ask a salesperson for help, like a complete beta. Excuse me, sir. Oh, oh, you're helping someone else. I'll be with you in one second. Yeah, no, no, you're busy. I see. Help him, then help her, then whoever's after them. I'll just wait here and feel the running shirts. Sir, do you need help? I'm waiting for Josh. Okay, I'm hearing it now. Well, Guys, I had a great help. idea. That's weird. That fart was from yesterday. Great idea, Peter. Listen, I was thinking, what if we make some extra cash by turning this place into a hotel? Great idea, Peter. Awesome. We're all in. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go apologize to the hotel towels for what's about to happen to them. Or will it be Two Balls, One Strike, submitted by Peter Griffin of Quahog, Rhode Island? And the winner is... Fainting Groom, sent in by Kevin and Lisa Tarzinski of Berkeley, Michigan. Well, it'll be nice to have a little road trip together. Yeah, we never had a lot of daddy-daughter time when I was young. You were always so busy. Not now, kitten. Oh, look. That's just like the pond Meredith used to take me to. <sighs> I miss her so much. Yeah, I could always talk to her when I was having a hard time. What the hell? Peter, what the hell is that? It's my new pitching machine, Lois. And look, it can turn our car into a silly tank. Watch me nail Cleveland. I got one too, bitch. All right, for this hotel operation to work, we all gotta pull our weight around here. Chris, you'll be the affable but dim bellhop. When you say help those people with their bags, I'll ask how high. Brian, you'll tend the bar and dole out snappy tidbits of advice. All right, stop by Brian's bar for some drinks, thinks, and winks. <laughs> we, can, we, we can pitch on it. Uh, Meg, you'll handle all the dishwashing, floor scrubbing, laundry, and anything else that involves breathing in chemicals. Can I have a snack? You're sitting where I died. 
Alice, what's wrong? All the kids at school said I'm Mad TV funny and not SNL funny. Oh, Lois, kids can be so mean. Have you ever heard the story of the ugly duckling? No. Well, there once was a young duckling who had a hard time fitting in, just like you. And one day, that duckling went off to college and created a website to rate women. Then he made a hundred billion dollars and mined user data to rig an election. All right, Chris, time for your old man to teach you how to swing a bet. But I've been playing Little League since I was seven. Oh, that's all right. After all, this is about father-son bonding and not about hitting you in the nuts to get on America's Funniest Home Videos. Wait, why are you pointing the pitching machine at my crotch? <laughs> hey! Come on, Chris. You and me up there at AFV in boxy six-button suits. The kings of 1991, just for one night. And I'll be the concierge, astutely learning everything there is to know about our guests. That will be my one task. Well, that and looking out for Dunstans. What? Dunstans. They'll check in. They'll check right in. Ah, and here come our guests now. First to arrive is Tom Tucker, here to celebrate the anniversary of his divorce with his annual bender. But it turns out the real Dianetics was the friends he made along the way. <sighs> Uh-oh. Stand back. The pitching machine is the only plumber we'll need. Wow, so am I also gonna be a billionaire making websites? No, but you'll use his site to post pictures of wine and passive-aggressively body shame other moms. Men, tonight you will have one last night of peace. I won't lie to you, a hotel guest has no regard for your life. That means some of you will not be coming back. Those who do will never be one color again. Now, here are your assignments. Anderson, your late-night vomit. Russo, you'll be in the ladies' room. Ooh. All right, knock it off, at ease. Edwards, you're gonna be folded into a monkey at the foot of the bed and then on. Look at Edwards, he's into it. Ooh. At ease! Dr. Hartman and his overbearing mother, they never travel apart. If he could just meet the right woman, he'd find the independence he needs. Ah, Principal Shepard, newly single, lost half the school in the divorce. The librarian, never married, adult Disney woman. First kiss was with a boy at theater camp who would one day get beaten up by David Hyde Pierce for being too fancy. I'm waking up outside again. Hey, you know anything about podcasts? I've been getting into podcasts. That's great. I love podcasts. Which ones are you listening to? I really like this one called Serial. That was cornflakes. Or was it? The answer at the bottom of the bowl isn't always what you expect. I'm Sarah Koenig, and this is Serial. You know, Carter, we don't mean to be a bother. Why don't we just stay at a hotel and you pay for the hotel and it should be the Legoland Hotel. I'm not giving you money for almost drowning my daughter and grandchildren. Besides, I have to leave town for a couple days and I need someone I can trust to look after the place. Where's Babs? Why can't she do it? I don't know. The ransom note didn't say. Daddy, I didn't know you were leaving town. Where are you going? Ah, uh, just some funeral. I'll be back in a couple of days. I left food out for the butlers. Just change their litter boxes tomorrow if you think of it. I say, Brian, do you know what these guests need? First to arrive is Tom Tucker, here to celebrate the anniversary of his divorce. Damn it. I guess the blanket bed. fell down. Well, I've got 12 seconds. What these guests need is someone to arrange a little romance in their lives. And I'm the perfect man for the job. After all, I do all of Kevin Spacey's matchmaking. So you're not interested in having sex with Kevin Spacey? Oh, good. Kevin's going to love that. Why are you even going, Daddy? People always want the richest person they ever worked for to attend their funeral. They'll be like, oh, my God, a rich person. I guess it's okay he's talking on his phone. Well, I can't miss Meredith's funeral. Yeah, I'd better go, too. But I need you to watch the house. Oh, Peter and the kids are more than capable of watching the house. Kids? They're staying? But they love funerals. Did you know this house is so large there's a 12-second echo? What are you talking about? 
The acoustics are such that it takes the human voice 12 seconds to bounce back as an echo. That's ridiculous. Not even the Grand Canyon has it. You know a... this house is so large, there's a 12-second echo? Ridiculous, huh? Okay, I'm hearing it now. Well, next time, maybe don't doubt me when I tell you the acoustics are such that it takes 12 seconds for the human voice to travel. I think we should hang some blankets in the hallway. Ridiculous, huh? All right, Brian. I've devised a way to get the librarian and Dr. Hardman together. You see, I've prepared a batch of Martha Stewart's chokiest scones. So when the librarian eats one, she'll start choking, and Dr. Hartman over there will save her with the Heimlich maneuver. Here she comes. Oh, these are gonna go straight to my thighs. <laughs> now, if only I could find a man to do the same. <laughs> oh, are we home? Why aren't we going up the driveway? Come on, I have to show you something first. It's yours. I had to call in a favor or two, but it's all for you. Dad, I guess our hotel worked out, and we actually made a decent profit. We sure did, son, but we still got work to do. Hi, everybody. I'm your karaoke host, Peter Griffin. I will be up here far too many times tonight. Just a quick reminder to all of you that even though we haven't started yet, there's already an hour and 45-minute wait. So go ahead and write down a song you want to sing, hand it to me, and I will let 15 musical theater people go before you. Remember, no repeats. We want to give everybody a chance to sing, although there will be the same rotation of five people up here over and over doing duets. I figured you can come here to sit whenever you miss Meredith. Daddy, this is beautiful. I'm sorry, Lois. You were right. People you love can betray you. But if they're rich enough, they can buy apology ponds. Thank you, Daddy. Oh, no. Raphael, the old gardener, died. I have a story I have to tell you, and spoiler alert, you'll be getting another pond. All right. Who's ready for me to kick things off and then go third and sixth? <laughs> 